The purpose of this screencast is to go through and show you how to get the answers and just provide an explanation for all the ramps on worksheet one. What I suggest you do is print out a new copy of that worksheet and then follow along as I do it. Try to do the problem first before I do it and then you can check your answer. So the first one we just have a ramp. Um, the ball is going from left to right. The initial position is zero meters and the initial velocity is zero meters per second. Make sure you pay attention to these because it's important. Uh, to the right in general is positive. That's just our convention and I'm going to stay with that for this uh, entire worksheet. So the motion map, I like to sometimes draw the motion maps right on the ramp and the ball starts off really slow at the top of the ramp but then as time goes on it's going to get faster and faster. So the arrows should get longer and longer as it goes down the ramp and you're not going to have any arrows that are the same length. Each arrow should get longer. For the position versus time graph, we have a, an initial position of zero, so i got to start here. And then the ball starts off slow and goes faster in the positive direction. So starting off slow in a position versus time graph means a shallow slope. And faster means getting the slope needs to get steeper. Then because it's going to the right, it's going in a positive direction. So I have a shallow slope and then it's going to get steeper and steeper and steeper and going in the positive direction so my position is increasing to more positive positions. For the velocity versus time graph, uh, we have an initial velocity of zero. It's a positive velocity so I have to be above the t-axis and I'm going faster and faster so I need to be going away from the t-axis. And lastly, acceleration versus time. Uh, you can do this in a couple of different ways. You can say I'm going forward, which is a positive sign. I'm going faster and faster, which is also a positive sign. Positive times a positive gives me a positive. So I have a positive acceleration. Or you can look at the slope of the velocity versus time graph. Note that it is positive, And then you have a, a positive acceleration. So that's how to do number one on that worksheet. Number two is pretty similar, except the ball is, oops, let's erase that. The ball is going in the other direction. So we have a ramp going to the left, which will be a negative direction. Still have the ball up here, and I think our initial position was something like 50 meters. And our initial velocity was still zero meters per second. Motion map is going to look very similar, except we're going to the left and down the ramp still. And again, your arrow should be getting longer and longer and longer. None of them should be the same length as it goes faster and faster down the ramp. For the position versus time graph, we're going to have an initial position that's positive. That's 50 meters, so I'm going to start somewhere up here. My initial velocity is still zero, and I'm going to be going faster and faster. So my slope needs to start off uh, flat and needs to get steeper and steeper. Except because I'm going to the left, I need to uh, my position needs to decrease. So I'm going to have a flat slope, but then when it curves, it's going to curve down. So see if I were to draw like a tangent line here, it's a negative slope tangent line because the ball has a negative velocity, it's going to the left. For velocity versus time, we just said it was a negative velocity. That means i got to be below the t-axis. Again, I'm starting with a initial velocity of zero meters per second. The ball is just sitting at the top of the ramp, and then it's let go, just like in your lab. And I'm going to be going faster and faster, so the velocities need to be getting bigger and bigger, but they're going to be negative because I'm going backwards, or going away from the t-axis. Acceleration versus time, I'm going to the left, I'm going in a negative direction. Faster and faster, which is a positive. Negative times a positive gives me a negative. Or I could just look at the slope of the velocity versus time graph, or which is negative here, or I could look at the concavity of the position versus time graph. Concave down means a negative, uh, negative uh, acceleration. All right, the next one starts to get a little bit different. We still have a ramp, 
and the ball is going to go up the ramp this time. So the ball starts at the bottom. Our initial position was 0 meters, and the initial velocity was not equal to 0 meters per second. So maybe it's 10 meters per second, or 20 meters per second, or something. It has some big push up the ramp, just like we did in class. So the motion map, the arrows have to be really big at first, because it's going really fast. What happens when something goes up the ramp? It's going to slow down. So each arrow needs to be shorter than the arrow before it. And the ball's going to be going slower and slower and slower until if we push it just right at the top of the ramp, it's going to stop. So there's my motion map. My position versus time graph. My initial position is zero. And I'm going to the right, which is a positive direction by our convention. So my position needs to go, oh, my position versus time graph, the graph needs to go up. Except with these first two, I had a slope of zero uh, starting off because I had an initial velocity of zero. Here I have a non zero initial velocity, and slope is velocity on a position versus time graph. So you need a big steep line, but as I go slow, I'm going to go slower and slower and slower. So the slope needs to get smaller and smaller and smaller until we hit a zero slope at the top, and this is where it stops. So I'm going really, really fast. If I put in a tangent line here, let's change the color. If I put in a tangent line, it's a pretty steep tangent line. Or if I go even back here, it's even steeper, and at the end, it's going to be horizontal. So really steep means really fast, then slower, then slower, and then to stop. Velocity versus time graph. I'm going to the right, so it's a positive velocity, so I'm going to be in the top part of the velocity versus time graph. But I have an initial positive velocity, and my velocity needs to decrease. I'm going to go slower and slower, which means I'm going towards the t-axis, and this is right where I'm going to stop at the end. Acceleration versus time, I'm going uh, in the forward direction, slower and slower, negative acceleration, concave down, negative acceleration, negative slope on the velocity versus time graph, negative acceleration. So three different ways to get the velocity versus time graph, or the acceleration versus time graph. So this is the uh, solution for the third one on that worksheet. So here we go with the next problem, and this one's a little different because we have a ramp and then a flat area. One thing we're going to assume at the flat area here that you know, even though it's kind of a sharp corner, the ball's not going to like hit a bumper. The motion's not going to be disrupted at all over this area. Also, we're going to assume that there's not really any friction. It's like a bowling ball, and it's going to go at a nice constant velocity over this flat area of the ramp. So for the motion map, um, what's nice is we've already done this first one here. This is just a ball rolling down the ramp. And so what we can do is... Oh, Get those stray marks erased there. So we can just essentially copy our motion map from before, where the arrows get longer and longer and longer. And we have one more that we can sort of fit in here. And then once it hits this smooth area, their arrows are all going to be the same length. And the thing is, is the arrows aren't going to be any shorter than like the last one on the ramp. They actually may be a little bit longer. But it's that they're definitely not going to be shorter because it's not going to slow down. Um, and so a lot of, one of the biggest mistakes is someone would have a nice long arrow here at the bottom of the ramp, and then these at the, uh, on the flat area all of a sudden would be short. So position versus time. So we're starting at a position of zero meters, going in the positive direction. And we have the same curve from before, where we're going faster and faster. But then all of a sudden, we're going to go at a constant velocity. So we're going to put this little mark here. To note that our curve is stopping. And then, whoop, as best we can, we're going to draw a straight line straight out of there. So this is a curve, and then this is a straight line. I didn't do a very good job of that. Maybe I'll retry it here. Um, you have to actually practice a little bit drawing your parabolas. This is something that's a little bit more difficult than... Uh, Students anticipate. Drawing it on the computer, I think, is even harder. So there's the first part of the parabola, and the second part. That should be a straight line there. You just have to imagine. Um, one thing that students do that makes it more difficult is they draw a curve like this, 
and they make their parabola go vertical at the end. Don't do that uh, because vertical means you're going infinitely fast, which doesn't make any sense. All right, so we have the upwards opening parabola and then a straight line. On the velocity versus time graph, that should be velocity versus time, we're going to be going fast, starting with a zero initial velocity, and then going faster and faster and faster forward. So zero initial velocity, velocities are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and then we're going to hit a constant velocity. So this does not mean not moving, it means going at a constant velocity. Maybe this is five meters per second or something, I don't know. Um, but it's going to be a constant velocity. That's what that horizontal line means there. And for the acceleration versus time graph, um, easiest way I think is just go from your velocity, slope of velocity versus time graph. You can also do the concavity of the XC graph where you can look at the positive and negative signs. But we're going to have a positive acceleration during the first part where it's going down the ramp and then zero acceleration because the velocity isn't changing. Remember acceleration is change of velocity. Velocity is not changing here. So that's how to do this problem. Um, remember that it's just sort of two different motions tacked together. We have the ball rolling down the ramp. We already did that. And then we just have constant velocity. That was unit two. So it's not as complicated as you think. If you think about it as two separate motions that you're just sort of piecing together on your graphs. All right, the last one here is where we put it all together. And it, while it could look a little scary, it's just three different motions that you've already done put together. So the first part is just like the problem before it, where we have uh, sliding down a ramp, speeding up. So if we draw our motion map, the arrow is going to start out small. Let's start out even smaller than that. We start the arrows out small, and then they get bigger and bigger as we go down the ramp. And then across the smooth area, area, they should be the same length, and they should be just a little bit longer or the same length as your last arrow. And then as we go up the ramp, it's going to get slower and slower, so our arrows have to get shorter and shorter until it probably comes to a stop at the other, other side of the ramp. For position versus time, uh, I guess all our positions are going to be positive here because uh, starting at zero meters and going to 50, so it's a positive. Uh, I'm going to have an upwards opening parabola. And then I'm going to have a straight segment. This is where it's going at constant velocity over the smooth area. And then here, this is the one that's a little trickier for some people. I have to continue on with the same speed here initially but I need to get slower and slower so my slope needs to get shallower and shallower so I need a nice kind of gentle curve like that so we have speeding up faster and faster constant velocity and then slower and slower on the velocity versus time graph I'm going to have a positive velocity going faster and faster and faster constant velocity and then I gotta slow down even though I'm still going in the positive direction here this means slower and slower so velocities are getting bigger they're still positive velocities are staying the same moving at a constant velocity velocities are getting smaller and smaller but they're still positive for the acceleration versus time graph I need a positive acceleration zero acceleration because over this flat segment my velocity is not going to be changing and then a negative acceleration because I'm going forward positive sign but I'm slowing down here I was going forward going faster and faster so that's how to do the very last problem on the ramp worksheet